good evening, my brothers and sisters. Good evening. So good to be with you on this great feast of the Holy Family, the family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And also today is uh, we're still in the middle of the octave of Christmas. So happy Merry Christmas! <laughs> today is the seventh day of the octave of Christmas. You know, uh, my wife and I went to Walmart a couple of days ago, and I noticed all the Christmas decoration was gone, and all we had now was Valentine gifts already. Yeah. So uh, I think a lot of people forget that we're still in the season of Christmas. The season of Christmas ends January 8th on the baptism of the Lord. So please, please don't take your Christmas decoration just yet. Uh, you know, uh, this, 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 this home is about family today. I love families. And I love to see big families. We had a uh, one of our families, one of our big families, had another baby this Thursday, and they're already here in the crying room. The little baby is already here. The Stanbox had another baby, so congratulations to them. But I have a story about a large family, not them. This family is Catholic, but not from not from Mercy Parish. They're from another church. And uh, it's a uh, husband and wife, Mike and Lisa. They had 11 boys, and you know, boys, boys are problem. And uh, these boys were mischievous, mischievous boys. And uh, they were always getting in trouble. So one one day, uh, a couple of them had got in trouble in the neighborhood. So the next door neighbor to them went to the father Mike and said, Mike, if you had to do it this all over again, would you still have children? And Mike thought about it for a few seconds. He goes, yeah, probably I will. But not the same 11. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, uh, today we celebrate this beautiful feast of the Holy Family. This is the glue family. Family is the glue that keeps society together, and the Holy Family is the model of all Christian families. Jesus' plan of redemption <laughs> takes place within the family. He could have come into the world by himself, he didn't need a family. But he came as far as part of the family, of a family. Our Pope Francis begins his document on the call to holiness, saying that we are made by God to be saints and not to settle for a bland and mediocre existence. We look to the Holy Family to see the way to become saints. God's great plan of salvation is a plan for the human family. God wants us to be our Father. He wants us all to be brothers and sisters to each other. Families did not come about by accident. God wants our families to be holy, since it is the basic of society and the church. Families are like small churches. It is in the family that we first learn to communicate. It is in the family that we first learn to love. It is in the family that we learn to forgive and to pray, and also to serve others. The future of the family depends on the, of the, the future of humanity depends on the family because it is through families that society, society continues and faith is passed from one generation to the next. I cannot think of many teachings more beautiful than our church teachings on the family. Christmas story is a family story. That is why Jesus grew up in the heart of a human family. <coughs> The human family teaches us that families are the heart of the church and the foundation of civilization of love and truth. Within the family, Jesus grew up in age, wisdom, and grace, just like we all must do. I think all of us are tempted to think that we can create our own holy families. We cannot. Only God provides the graces for our families to be holy. Still, we have to do everything in our power to give His grace an opportunity to flow into our homes. The foundation of the family is a friendship of love. In the family, we learn that, sac that love is sacrifice, that we must sacrifice for each other out of love. It is very important for the health of the family that husband and wife show their love for each other and their children. As parents, we're going to make many mistakes raising our children, but if we practice love 
each other and show that love to our children, almost any mistake can be overcome. Children, on the other hand, must love and respect their parents. Parents need to teach their children love and respect. If children do not learn to respect their parents, how are they going to learn to respect anyone or anyone in authority? And how are children going to learn respect if they don't witness the respect from their mother and their father? By treating each other with love and respect, husband and wives are building a foundation from which a holy home can be built. Children must learn the faith from their parents. We parents are their first and most important teachers. We must spend quality time with each other and pray and go to church together. Talking about faith is not enough. Children must see a faith that is real, active and alive. If the faith of the parents is lukewarm, it is very hard for the faith of the children to be a lot better. A good thing that parents should do with their children is to pray the rosary and of course come to church together. Also doing acts of charity brings families together. Families that work and pray together stay together. Today many families are struggling, suffering and broken. This is in great part due to a culture that seems to be in opposition to the family. It seems like our secular culture world is doing everything possible to destroy the family. One of the greatest threats our families are facing today is simply that we don't have, we don't spend enough time with each other. We're too busy, we work, sports, and many other things. But besides the problem with the lack of time, we also have a culture that is poisonous to the family. Many laws and ideas are in effect and many more seem to be coming daily in complete opposition to our church teachings. Catholic kids, for the most part, are not properly catechized and the college years are becoming very dangerous for them. <coughs> many colleges are very anti-Catholic. Isn't that ironic? The first colleges were founded by Catholics and now so many of them seem to be against the Catholic Church. Now let's get back to something more pleasant. Apart from all the inspiration we can draw from the reflection on the Holy Family, there are other parts and places in the Bible that tell us of God's plan for the family. In Matthew 19, Jesus says, Have you not read from the very beginning that the Creator made them male and female? For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. <coughs> then, in the letter to the Ephesians, we see this beautiful teaching. He says, The love of a husband and wife for one another is a reflection of the love of Christ for the church. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. This letter tells us that if we want to know what a family should be like, we, we, want to, <coughs> we must look at how Christ loved the church. Christ willingly died on the cross. He gave his life in sacrifice on the cross for the church, and this is how families ought to be. We must love each other to the end in a sacrificial way. The marriage between a husband and a wife are symbol, are a symbol of the love of Christ for the church. Married couples, we all have a very important responsibility to be witness of this love to the world in a sacrificial way. The purpose God created the sacrament of marriage is to bring new life to the world and for the husband and wife to be united as one with God and become holy in a loving family. The parents must help each other get, uh, to get to heaven and also bring their children along. God wants all small families to be part of this larger family. We learn from the scriptures that when we, be, when we become sons and daughters of God through faith in Jesus and baptism, we also learn how to act in the family of God, which is the church, our holy mother. The church is our larger family, and the sign of unity of this larger family is our church and our 
holy father, our pope. The word pope means father. He is the vicar of Christ on earth. In other words, he represents Jesus to us. We must unite under our pope and be docile to his teachings. We must respect him and love him just like we love our earthly father, fathers. Our holy mother, the church, and our holy father may not be perfect since they both have a human component. But we must respect and love them just like we love our earthly parents, which are not perfect as well. The beautiful thing about the family of God is that we have a perfect Father in heaven. Therefore, His commands are not burdensome or arbitrary. They are rather what is best for us because He loves us so much. And God gives us the grace that we need to love Him and love one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us therefore seek to be faithful children of God. I love our lovely families, and I love our family here at Mercy Parish. There is no stronger desire in my heart than one day to have all my friends, relatives, and family in heaven together. In my view, there is no more precious institution that God created than the family. God has given us this wonderful institution as part of his plan to teach us how to love and become holy. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be praised now and forever. May God bless you all. Merry Christmas. And I love you all, my dear family. Thank you.